Okay, this is a project I've been working on for a little while, and it's geared more towards the C, C++ uh, group than the MicroPython or CircuitPython group. Um, I want to talk about my setup here, and then I'll talk about the project. So I'm running Manjaro Linux on my laptop here. And I've got connected to it a Raspberry Pi Zero. Over here, I've got my Raspberry Pi Pico with an LED and a PIR sensor attached to it. And I've also, running to the back, got a serial console debug attached. Um, on my setup here, I look down here, I've got four workspaces set up. One that I use for my browser, one that I use for Visual Code Studio, one that I use for a file manager that's called Space FM, and Space FM allows you to have multiple panes open, which makes copying from drive to drive real easy. And then the last workspace is where I actually connect up my um, console using the screen command to my Pico. And now I'll talk about what this project is about. So in the MicroPython and CircuitPython world, which is I'm familiar with, you have an interpreter. So you can develop some code and test it right on the board itself and see your results. In the C and C++ world, you don't have that. You compile your code and make a UF2 file and then copy it to the Pico board and it runs. You don't have an interpretive mode at all. So what I wanted to do with this project was to kind of create a little command line interpreter so you could run commands. And let me switch. So you can see here how I can either blink an LED or read the PIR sensor. Um, I've actually got a little calculator kind of built-in uh, list functions, so you can list your user functions. But I wanted to create a way where C, C++ developers could just develop a function, and I'll bring up a function to show as an example. So here I've got a blink LED function. And in that blink LED function, I pass um, some string tokens. All you have to do is basically use this kind of function name and the parameters passed and then you decide what you're going to do in the function. And in this case I am taking one of the tokens and making it uh, represent an LED pin. The other one, I'm taking token two and representing the number of iterations. Another um, third parameter is I'm taking token three and using it for milliseconds. And all that's doing is setting up one of the pins, whatever you specify on the command line, to be used as the LED and then run a certain number of iterations for a certain length of time. So it's a user-defined function that you can then add to this init functions uh, function. And all you're doing is you're setting up a pointer to a function and it's got a help command also. The idea behind this was to have a programmer just worry about creating the functions he wanted to test. So I wanted to test being able to blink an LED, being able to do a PIR sensor, or maybe reading from a microphone. I didn't want to have to write all the other code over and over again. So I just created these user-defined functions. So all you have to do is create a user-defined 
function, add that user defined function into this init user functions function, and uh, put a uh, function declaration in your header file. So basically, you've got two files that you're working with. You're working with a user funks file and a user funks header file, and that's it. You make those changes and recompile and copy the UF2 file to the Pico, and you're ready to roll. So one of the things that I do in this uh, visual studio or visual code studio is I use something called SSHFS and SSH is a secured share in the Linux world and SSHFS is a secured share file system. So I can actually create a drive on my, um, in this case, on my Raspberry Pi Zero and then mount that drive and use it just like any other drive. So you're basically logging into the Raspberry Pi Zero and using the drive, but you don't have to do anything else. You're just using it kind of as a drive. So it's an extension in Visual Code uh, Studio that I've done. And what it does is it gives me the ability as you can see right there, I'm in that Raspberry Pi directory, and I can just run my build right here in uh, Visual Code. So it builds it, then I use space FM to, uh, let me reset the board, and you can actually see the board should show up when I reset it. And there it shows up, SDB1. And then I just copy the file to that drive. And then my console will run. And there it just started running. And so I can do something like blink, LED, which is one of my user functions. Um, 15 is one of them, or you could use the onboard LED. Say I want to do it for two un um, 10 iterations at 250 milliseconds an iteration. Hit enter. And there you see my LED is blinking. So that's the idea of the council, is just to be able to create these functions, recompile it without having to have all the other code. It's already done for you. You just create your user function, and then you can list what your user functions are. And there you can see I've got another one called read PIR sensor, which um, I can do. So read... PIR sensor and it's on pin 22 and normally when you're reading a PIR sensor you would just put it in a continuous loop because that's what it's going to do. It's going to read if there's motion detected or not. But I'm just going to put it in a loop, a certain number of iterations so you can see uh, it's reading. So I said start in five seconds. Let's say that's five seconds. Put my hand in front of it, motion detected. Put my hand in front of it again, motion detected. And it's also blinking the onboard LED. But you get the idea of this is just a nice way of testing in kind of an interpretive mode for the C++, C++, C++ users. I'm just using pointers to functions. Uh, 
and this will end eventually. And then I use somebody else's code that you can read about on the GitHub page uh, to do a calculate. And it you can do any kind of calculations you want, sine, cosine, whatever. If I wanted to calculate uh, the sine uh, 0.5, it calculates. You can do square roots, powers, pretty much any mathematical function. Uh, I don't have it stripping out spaces, so that's one of the requirements with this is don't put any spaces if you're doing the calculation. So in a nutshell, that's what I was trying to accomplish. It is code that is in development. You are welcome to go out there and play with it, uh, download it, if you want to take it over, that's fine. It was just something for me to make developing uh, in the C, C++ world easier. And you may ask, why don't I just use MicroPython or CircuitPython? I have. I've used it on ESP boards. Um, I found when I first started using the Pico, because I got it when it first came out, a lot of the circuit Python and MicroPython stuff didn't work because it was so brand new. But the C and C++ stuff does work. And there are tons of examples of code in the SDK. Also, my SDK is on the Raspberry Pi Zero. So, truly, all I'm using my laptop for is developing, uh, doing my code. The code is compiled on the Raspberry Pi Zero, so I can actually unplug my Raspberry Pi Zero, plug it into another computer, and go to town coding. That's the idea behind it. Anyway, I'll put the link to the GitHub, and if you find it useful, uh, let me know. Thanks. Bye.